Hello Harvest Time family, I am Pastor Adam from the South Campus. It is my pleasure to be with you on day two of the fast. I'm still pretty chipper, I'm still well fed. Uh, but a story that I want to bring to your mind for today and for the entire duration of the fast and even the year is from 1 Kings 19. I think it's going to be essential as we are uh, setting our minds to go, setting our mind to, to pray, God, cause our church to arise, cause us to go, cause us to proclaim the glories of your son, Jesus. And in this story in 1 Kings 19, we see that Elijah himself has completed a 40-day fast, and he has retreated uh, to a cave in Mount Horeb. This is also the same mountain, Mount Sinai. This is the mountain of God, and, and so he's fasted for 40 days. He's in a cave on the mountain, the same mountain where God appeared to Moses in the burning bush, the same mountain where God's presence came and his glory was revealed and the mountain shook, the same mountain where the Ten Commandments were given. And if you don't know the story, you might think, that's what we're after. Like, this is the goal that I would so separate myself from the world, that I would be living in communion with the living God, that I would walk these ancient paths of righteousness that these great men before me had walked. But it's only half right. Uh, and to be half right is still to be wrong. Uh, because when God came to Elijah in verse 9, it says this. It says, uh, There he came to a cave, and he lodged in it. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, what are you doing, Elijah? And Elijah's like, what are you talking about? No, Elijah's like, I've been jealous for your name, and they have killed the prophets, and I'm the only one left, and they're seeking to kill me too. Um, and in the still small voice of God comes and speaks to him and says once more, Elijah, what are you doing here? Go and anoint Haziel, the king of Syria. Go and anoint Jehu, the next king of Israel. Go and anoint Elisha to be the prophet after you. The idea is that, is that he had fled to this cave. And the remarkable thing is, in these two chapters, chapter 18 and 19, you can see the full spectrum of Christian life um, displayed in Elijah's life. And there's the same response of God. And the response of God is, what are you doing here? You need to go. The full spectrum. You know, he's done something spiritual. He's fasted for 40 days. You need to go. He's withdrawn into his cave because the world is evil and they're persecuting him and there's trouble outside. And God says, go back into that world. He's at one point, he's depressed and he's suicidal. And God comes and nourishes him. And he says, you need to go. You know that he called down fire and that he prayed and it, and it rained again. He brought blessing and he saw spiritual things in his life. And God says, that's, that was in the past. You still need, you still need to go today. You know, and he and he has that that where he's running and he and he beats King Ahab in the in the foot race. You know, King Ahab and his chariots. Like he's been empowered by God and used by God. And at the end of it, he saw that people still did not receive the message, and so he's depressed and forlorn. And he's thinking, what is the point? And the point is, if you're thinking, what is the point? The point is, is no matter what situation you find yourself in this morning, whether you would receive Christ today, or you've been a believer for 50 years, and you've seen 10,000 miracles, and whatever, the whole gamut in between, the message is still the same. The message from God to us is, what are we doing here? What are we doing today? You know, the mission is to go, to get out there, to make disciples of all nations, to proclaim Christ, to shine our light, to reveal um, the glory of God. And so then this fast, I would just encourage you to make that your aim, that when we're um, fasting some, some time, that that would be time that we'd be able to let God use us to bring the gospel to someone else. When we're pushing into the word, that it isn't just something I'm doing for an hour for my fast, but that I have this goal in mind, that God, I, I want to see something in your word that I can share with somebody, that when I go, I have something to share, that when we're pressing in in prayer, it isn't just repentance or crying out for revival, those things are great, but God, empower me to be your witness, encourage me and give me boldness so that I can share your message. All of the goals of the fasting, whatever you're skipping, whatever you're doing, let that goal be, make me the man or woman who can so go and can so share the message because God says to all of us, just like he said to Elijah, what are you doing here? You need to go. 
Amen. Let's pray it quick. I'm running out of time. God of glory, you are awesome. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this message. Father, I just pray that your spirit would enable us wherever we're sitting, wherever we're listening, that we would be like Elijah, that we'd listen and that we would go. And that, Father, your spirit would go with us and that you would enable us and empower us and that we would see great and mighty things throughout this fast. Encourage our hearts and empower us with your spirit, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen.